Oh man, where do I even begin with this one? In the fall of 2019, Idaho was suddenly put on high alert when they heard about the mysterious disappearance of two children, 17-year-old Tylee and seven-year-old JJ. And what started off as a normal missing persons case quickly turned into an increasingly bizarre story, mysterious illnesses, missing children, and a Mormon cult. When relatives of the Valor children couldn't get in touch with JJ and Tylee after a month of trying to contact them, they asked law enforcement in Idaho to stop by their place for a welfare check. So the cops showed up to the home of Lori Vallow and her fifth and current husband, Chad, but didn't see any trace of the children. When the police asked where the kids were, Chad and Lori told them that they were in Arizona with their friend, Melanie. The couple then told officers that they were caught at a bad time, so they asked for them to leave and come back tomorrow. Immediately, the cops were sketched out, but they gave them the benefit of the doubt and agreed to come back the following day. The authorities called this Melanie woman and asked if the children were with her, but Melanie said they hadn't visited her in months. That next day, the cops showed up at Lori and Chad's place, this time with a warrant. But when they got there, Lori and Chad were gone. A week later, Melanie called the cops and confessed that Lori and Chad had asked her to lie to officials about the kids' whereabouts, but said she refused. At this point, the cops believed that JJ and Tylee were in danger, so a manhunt was called to search for Chad, Lori, and the kids. A couple months later, Chad and Lori were seen driving at a resort in Hawaii. Lori was ordered to show up in Idaho court on January 30th with the kids or she would face severe legal consequences. But when that day came, Lori was nowhere to be found. On February 20th, Hawaii police arrested Lori on a $5 million warrant. She was charged with two felony counts and taken into custody. So that March, Lori was flown back to Idaho and booked at Madison County Jail, where she waited because she was unable to make bail. By this point, Lori and Chad were heavily under suspicion for their missing children because authorities started to fear the worst. Now, you may remember Lori's mugshot from the news that year. She was this tan blonde haired, blue eyed mom that just kind of looked like anyone you would pass at the grocery store. But when you find out what she was accused of, whoa. The police started begging the public for any information they might have on the children, which is when they get a call from Lori's former friend. The friend asked authorities if they knew anything about Chad and Lori's religious beliefs or their past relationships. And they were like, no, we're kind of focusing on the kids right now. And let's just say, it's about to get really weird. But let's come back to this. So June 9th, 2020, the news broke that human remains had been discovered in Lori and Chad's backyard. The corpses were identified as the kids, JJ and Tylee. This was such devastating news for their family and the whole country. JJ and Tylee had quickly become some of the most famous missing kids in America, and everyone was hoping that the search wouldn't end this way. Here's how they were discovered. So investigators were scouring the property when they noticed a four by six patch of grass in the backyard that looked a bit shorter than the rest. Officials slowly started digging up the soil until they hit these three large and smooth rocks. Underneath the rocks, there was some thin wooden paneling, and under that was a black sheet of plastic. And at that point, searchers knew what was going to be under that. And let's just say, it wasn't pretty. That next day, Chad joined Lori behind bars because he was charged with two felony counts of hiding and destroying evidence. Both pleaded not guilty to their charges and are now awaiting their trials, which has been set for July of this year. So now we get the opportunity to discuss an active case that hasn't gone to trial yet. Here's what we know so far though. A number of people close to Chad and Lori have expired in very mysterious ways. Let's start with Lori. When JJ and Tylee were first reported as missing in September, the cops started looking into the case and stumbled upon another crime that occurred occurred months prior involving Lori's previous husband, Charles. Remember how I mentioned that Chad was Lori's husband, numero cinco? Like number five, five husbands. Apparently Charles, Lori's fourth husband, had been trying to distance himself from Lori as much as possible, and the two had just recently gotten divorced. Can we talk about this for a second? Five husbands? Like you went through not one, not two. I feel like after number three. You, you probably should not get it married yeah, again. Like, you know it's not working. At some point, a fight went down between Charles and Lori's brother, Alex. Well, Alex ended up firing around at Charles in what he claimed to be self-defense, but the authorities wouldn't even get the chance to look into this case because the next month, Lori, Alex, and the kids moved to Idaho with Chad. Then one day out of the blue, Alex just keels over. Wait. What? Alex passed from unknown causes. After an autopsy was performed, examiners concluded it was due to a clot in his lungs. So in a matter of months, Lori lost her ex-husband and then her brother. She must have been a mess. And actually she wasn't. When the police arrived to investigate the scene after Alex pulled the trigger, Lori is seen on body cam footage laughing and smiling. She was even apologizing to the neighbors about all the cop cars in the neighborhood. Like I mentioned earlier, Lori wasn't the only one with a suspicious loss in the family. Chad, the guy who she married after Charles, had also lost his 
his wife, Tammy, under super sus circumstances. According to Tammy's family, she passed in her sleep from natural causes and was quickly buried without an autopsy. Okay. Two weeks after that, Lori and Chad got married in Hawaii. Now, of course, as the cops discovered more details about Lori and Chad's exes, they were starting to think the whole natural cause thing wasn't true. So authorities had Tammy's remains dug up and re-examined the COD, cause of death. Because come on, the lady was only 49 years old. At the time, the authorities hadn't released any results of the new autopsy because they were literally in the midst of prepping for the trial. Around the same time, officials found out on October 9th, just 10 days before Tammy passed, she called 911 to report that a masked man had fired paintballs at her in her driveway. She was obviously terrified and posted about the experience on her Facebook, where she claimed she had no idea who the person was or why they would want to hurt her. But before detectives could start an investigation, Tammy passed and the case was informally closed. So let's move on and talk about the other half of this bizarre equation. Who the heck is Chad? And how did he meet Lori? And why on earth would they get married two weeks after he lost his wife? Well, Lori was a big believer in the end of times. She was a part of this doomsday prepping cult called Preparing a People. According to their website, Preparing a People is a mission to get people ready for the second coming of Jesus. The Preparing a People group has since made it known that they do not agree with Chad and Lori's beliefs after they were arrested and have continually clarified to the public that they are not a cult, but just an information source for personal preparation and education. I hate to say it, but if you have to clarify to the public that you're not a cult, then you might be a cult. What is it saying? Like if you walk like a duck and quack like a duck, you're probably a duck. Chad was kind of a celebrity and is definitely not a cult cult. He was the self-published author who wrote over 25 doomsday books for Mormon audiences that discuss things like bioterrorism acts, catastrophic natural disasters, and of course the end times. Chad's whole story is that there were two separate times when he almost lost his life. And after those experiences, he received a visionary gift from God. Chad claimed the gift allowed him to see things that would happen in the future. One day he said his angels had shown him that he was going to lose Tammy very suddenly, and a little while later, he did. But did she really pass from natural causes? Because to me, it sounds like she came down with a case of, my husband says he has a visionary gift, and now he needs to prove it. But hey, I'm just speculating. Lori was a devoted doomsdayer and avid reader of all of Chad's books. Lori's family claimed the more she read the books, the more she began to spiral. In 2018, Lori finally got to meet the famous Chad when he was teaching a class at her local church. The two immediately became close, and from that moment on, they talked every day. At one point, Lori even traveled with him to a religious conference in Utah where Chad gave speeches about his books. Eventually, Charles, Lori's fourth husband, said their marriage was suffering greatly, as was Lori's mental state. He told friends and family that he feared for his own safety. I have no idea what's going on in this story. No idea. Charles then filed for a divorce and in the divorce paperwork, he claimed that Lori was mentally unwell as she believed she was a god assigned to carry out the work of 144,000 at Christ's second coming in July of 2020. The 144,000 that Lori referred to were apparently God's new chosen people that would live in New Jerusalem after the great war that was coming. Lori believes she was eternally married to the Mormon prophet Moroni, and also thought she was the grandmother of the founder of Mormonism, Joseph Smith. She also said that she was a translated being who was immortal and anytime Charles got in her way, she would threaten his life. When Charles saw that his lunatic wife was starting to pull out large amounts of money from their joint bank account, he began to worry about what she was planning. He even told police that he feared for his own life, which was a valid concern because a few months after his divorce with Lori, Charles was slain by Alex. The saddest part about all of this was that Charles had really tried to get help for Lori before the divorce. I mean, it was clear that Lori was suffering from some sort of mental illness or delusion, but she continually refused any help that was offered to her. She believed that if mental professionals discovered she was this godlike being, she would be locked up forever. Later that day, after Alex popped Charles, Lori threw a pool party. You know, like you do when your house is an active crime scene. The day after that, Lori texted Charles' two sons from his previous marriage about what happened and was like, yeah, sorry, but uh, he's gone. Charles' sons were in complete disbelief when they got the text, like they couldn't even tell if she was being serious. Once again, Lori and her family picked up and moved. In September of 2019, the family took a trip to Yellowstone National Park, which is the last time Tylee was ever seen alive. JJ was last seen by school officials a couple days later before he disappeared. And in November, after not hearing from the kids in a month, their relatives called Kyle 
pops to check in on the kids and we are officially back to where we started. I told you that this one was gonna be a wild one. Since the discovery of the remains last June, Chad and Lori have remained in custody while detectives, friends, and family continue to try and put pieces together. Last November, an audio recording of Lori was released from when she was speaking at a meeting in 2018. She talked about how she was planning on harming her third husband, Joe, but after she became closer to God, she decided not to act against Joe. Instead, Lori's third husband, Joe, passed away from a heart attack, which was one of the only times police actually believed the COD of an ex to be true, but also like, come on, like, of, of course he did. Is there anyone in Lori's life who she dated that is currently still alive? In February of 2021, Tammy's autopsy was concluded, but the results were kept confidential. Chad and Lori are set to go to court in July of 2021, which I'm sure the whole world will be tuning in to see this. Chad's younger brother, Matt, had issued a few public pleas to his brother to help the investigators when things were still unknown. In the letters, he begged Chad to cooperate with the authorities, and you can really tell how much pain Chad has caused his entire family. Some of Lori's friends have come forward saying they believe Lori has been brainwashed. They claim that she became obsessed with this religious group. She would have never dreamed of harming her kids. They also said they saw the most dramatic changes in Lori after she met Chad, which led them to believe she was under his control and would do anything, he said. I guess the biggest question that has yet to be answered throughout all of this is why? Why would Lori and Chad do what they did to these kids? Some people theorize that Lori and Chad asked Tylee to cover for them, but she refused and was taken out with JJ, who was just an afterthought. Others speculate that maybe JJ and Tylee saw something they weren't meant to see, but some just think that the kids were in the way of Lori and Chad's new dream life, and they didn't plan to include them in the 144,000. Honestly, it's nearly impossible to say why the couple would do such a thing, and it's such a confusing and convoluted story. I'm hoping a lot of our questions will be answered when the two go to court, and I'm really, really hoping that Tylee and JJ get the justice that they deserve. This story is definitely going to be one of those stories that keeps me up at night.